Welcome. In this video, I will be showing you how to install and use one of my apps called Notemark. This video will be targeting version 0.10, so if you're not using this version, it may look or behave differently. So, what is Notemark? Notemark allows you to make and edit Markdown based notes from any device with a modern web browser. It has a simple user interface and fast note rendering powered by a WASM renderer. Notes can be reached by a friendly URL, making it easier for sharing. As this app uses Markdown, it also features a asset manager. This allows you to upload images and other files to then link in with your note. There are many more features this app offers. You can look at the list on the project homepage. Now you know what Notemark is, what do you need to install it? The easiest and officially supported way is through the provided Docker images. So you will need a container runtime that can use Docker images, a database server, or you can use SQLite, and a directory for storing notes and any uploaded assets. There are two different deployment strategies. The first one is to deploy the back end and the front end services separately, or deploy via the all in one image, which also happens to be a new addition in this version of Notemark. In this video, I'll be using the latter. For a database, I'll be sticking with SQLite, as it is a suitable option to illustrate deployment. Okay, let's move on to installing Notemark now. I will be using Docker Compose to make the Docker setup easier. So first we'll need to create a docker-compose.yaml file. I'm going to be editing mine in Vim. You can use whatever editor you like. I'll be using the example Docker Compose file that is listed on the website's documentation page. However, I'll be modifying it slightly. As we can see in the first command, we are creating a a volume called data, which will be handled via Docker. And for the image, we'll be using the all in one and we'll be using a specific tag, which will be 0 0.10. That's the current version and is better than using latest because we won't have any unexpected changes. And here we're binding the Docker data volume with the slash data directory where all of the notes and assets will be stored and if a SQLite database is being used you'll find it here as well. Next for the environment variables we'll be skipping JWT secret for now and moving on to cause underscore origins. This should be set to the current origin that you're going to be accessing Notemark from. So in this example, it is set as HTTP localhost 8000. That is because we're going to be accessing Notemark locally from localhost at port 8000 over HTTP. It's important that this is set correctly, otherwise you'll find it won't work properly. Next, we need to specify the ports that will be exposed so that we can access Notemark. Here I am using port 8000, which happens to be the same as the port inside the Docker container. So on the left side, you can use any port number you want. However, on the right side, you want to make sure that it stays at 8000. OK, let's now write and quit and move on to the next step. To fill in that JWT secret, we need to generate a secret key. So for that, I'm going to be using OpenSSL as it has a random function that can output in base64. Here's the command I'm using. And if we go back into the file and add our secret key in, we are now done. Now we've finished creating our Docker Compose file, we can actually create the containers. Using Docker Compose up d, we'll create a running container of Notemark. And the dash D flag means it will be in a detached state so that it will run in the background. As we can see, the container and the network and the volumes are now set up and running. 
Now our server's running, we can go into a web browser and access Notemark. And here's the Notemark homepage. And now navigating to the top right hand corner, there is a person icon. If we click that, we'll see a login button. From here, we can click need an account, which will bring us into the create account page where we can create our first user. And as we can see, we have a username, full name and password and a password confirm box. Always remember to enter a secure password. And we also have a API server at the top. However, we don't need to touch that since we are running the all-in-one image where everything is under one host. And now if we click create user, we'll be navigated back to the login page as our user has been created. We can now enter in our username and password that we created earlier. And then clicking login, we'll be navigated to the home page. And now we can click the My Notes button, which will take us to the user's note page. In Notemark, all notes have to be stored under a book. So let's create a book. Clicking the folder icon will create the book. From here, we can enter in our book name and we can see that it will auto generate a slug. The slug is basically what shows up in the URL. As you can see, if you create a book with the same name, the slug will have a random ID generated at the end. You can edit this as well if you don't want that. We'll also make this book public so that we can access it from anywhere without any login. This will be demonstrated later. Now we can create our book. As we can see on the left hand side, our book has been created. Now we can create a note to put inside our book. We can click the button next to the Create Book button. This is where we create a new note. From there, we can fill in a title and a slug. In this one, let's remove the random ID to demonstrate that you can remove an ID from the slug. With our note created, we can now access this dropdown, which will allow us to access notebook settings note settings, note assets, which we'll access later. And we can copy the page link for sharing. Now let's move on to editing some content inside our newly created note. We can click on the editor button. That brings us into the editor where we can see a toolbar with loads of different options. Let's focus on the main window. As you can see, after a while of typing and then stopping, the save button will change from red back to a neutral color. This means that the note has been auto saved. Now we can navigate to the rendered button. This will show us what our note looks like as rendered markdown. We can also view the plain view, which will just show us a read only view of the editor. Let's move back into the editor and make our font bold. Let's now attach an image to our note. We can do that by going to the drop down and selecting note assets. From here, we can select an asset that we want to upload. I will go and pick a demo image. We can also give our uploaded file a name. However, I'll leave it blank because we'll have one auto filled. As we can see, after we've clicked the upload button and the asset is uploaded to Notemark, we'll see in the existing assets table that we now have an asset. We can also see a preview of our asset if it supports that. From here, we can also delete our asset or open the preview in a new tab. If we right click the open a new tab button, we can copy the link. Then we can go back to the editor and select insert image. Now we can give our image some alt text and paste in our source that we copied. And now our image is inserted into our note. And if we go back to the rendered view, 
we can now see our note has the image that we've inserted. If we navigate back home, we can see under recent notes, our note has appeared. And now clicking on that will take us to our note. As you can see from the drawer on the left hand side, we can go between our notes and our folders. Let's log out and see what our note looks like from the public view. As we can see, we are now logged out. And let's use the find user modal to find our account. And as you can see, we can navigate to our note that we created. And we can see that we cannot edit the note. And we also don't have any of the management buttons. We can only copy a link. In any of the note areas, we can also make the note full screen. This is useful when you're editing. OK, now let's see how to use the inbuilt command line tool inside of the Notemark executable. In Docker, using Docker Compose, we can use the Docker Compose exec command with our service name and the path of our executable. And now we can put dash dash help so we can see the help view. As you can see, there's lots of commands that we can run, including serve, clean, user, and help. Let's have a look at the user management. As you can see, we can create a user, remove an existing user, set the password of a user, and view the help. Let's add a new user from the command line. As you can see, we need to provide a username and a password for our new user. Let's create a user. Now with our user created, we get a response that the user demo has been created. And for any future reference, it also gives us our user ID. Let's go back to the web browser and log in with our user. As you can see, after being logged in with our demo user, the user has no notebooks or any notes. And we can see that the username is demo. And that's all I will be demoing in this video. But what's the future for this app? Well, here are some of the features I have planned. Offline access to allow access to your notes while offline. Import and export functionality. S3 object storage for notes and notes assets. And a revision history so that you can roll back changes if something bad happens to your note. As we've reached the end of the video, don't forget to like if you found it useful and subscribe to see more tech and programming related content. Feel free to leave a comment for any questions or suggestions that you may have. Hope to see you next time.